Hi. Hi. Okay, so this has been a long time coming, right? Because we've known each other for some time now. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, here we are. We're, we've got what? What are we drinking? We've got some cabs, cab sav today. Cab sav, cab sav, cabernet, cabernet sauvignon. So cab sav for those nothing. like savvy, whiny. Okay, cab sav. It's just cab a quicker. Ooh, quicker. That should... cab okay, sav. listen. We are still in the process of deciding what this podcast is going to be called. We really don't know. And I am really tempted now to go Chops cab and cab. Chops and cab sam. Oh, <laughs> alliteration. Okay, so what's it called? It's not called cab sav. Well, that's the... Okay, so it's Tête de Lyon. Okay. I think oh, my French is Good French. Great. Good French. Yeah. Better than mine. From um, Cape Town, South Africa. Mm. Um, I mean, we could go into more detail, but that's it. I'm... The blind purchase, yeah. and it was on sale, mm-hmm. and there were like two bottles left out of a whole row. So, good sign. Anyways, I like it. I enjoy it. It's nice, full bodied. It's not too strong. It's not too sweet. But that's that's really what you can expect from South African wine. It's so good. Like I'm it. sipping it right now. Nobody can see me except for you, but that's <laughs> that's what we're here for, right? It's true. Okay, the other thing we're here for. Yeah, the, the main the main thing besides the drinking wine. Okay, Verity by no. Colleen Hoover. Yeah, so books. Books is what we're talking about. We're Should talking about we books. we introduce ourselves? I mean, like, we're totally winging this. It's our first time. But, like, this is the vibe because, we, you know, we're, we're drinking. We're chatting. Yes, <laughs> about this gosh awful, horrible book. Oh, my God. I'm sorry if anyone out there... If you're even listening to maybe the one person that might listen to this, mm-hmm. um, if you really liked this book, I'm really happy for you if you liked this book. But for <laughs> us, for us, it was not quite the slam dunk that we were hoping it to be. Okay, you know, it wouldn't be a fair review if we didn't actually, you know, give the baby with the bath water. It wasn't all bad. No, it was right? not all bad. You're right. You're right. It's not all bad. So... To give a you know some a little context as yeah. well, just like some context too. Okay. While we read this book or and or listened to the audiobook, because I'm mm-hmm. a big audio um, girl, we were messaging each other back and forth. Yeah, about our commentary. Yeah, and you're right, you're right, Chi Chi, that um, this actual story is is good. It's riveting. I enjoyed the story. Yeah, and now I'll leave it at that. Okay. But you're right. It has to be a fair and honest. We can't just shit on books and drink wine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can, but we won't because we're generous and we're nice. Okay. All right. So before we go any further, let's do like a really brief introduction because I just realized you said my name. Yes, I know. I realized that too. Nobody knows who I am. So I'm Chi Chi. I'm more than just a name behind, you know, microphone. I might sound really good. I might not. Anyway, the first thing that I think is really cool is that I'm a grad student. I'm I'm in a PhD program. I'm obsessed with my like my research, uh, which looks at basically humanitarian images um, of war and hunger and the reception of those images in the West. But in addition to that, and <laughs> that's really messed up. But um, like even cooler. Okay, is that I'm a mom to two kids, two very beautiful children. Apart from like those two little, you know, tidbits about me, I just I love to read and I wish that I could get lost in books, you know. Okay, so that's me. I'm Chantal. Um, I'm not a PhD student, but I do have an academic background. Yeah. Um, I point that out because I think that's really important for this podcast going forward is that not only are you going to have an intellectual review um an opinion on things mm-hmm. but you're also going to have like the street the nitty-gritty the mm-hmm. uh, you know mom approach i'm also a mom as well yeah i have three kids also would wish i could just sit down and read all day but i can't so that's also why i'm a big audiobook listener because i can do it anytime anywhere pretty much so this podcast is going to be very beneficial for mm. me as well yeah. because it gets me out of that certain genre that I like. World War II. I, I like other things besides that too. Um, I'm really, really trying to open things up. And it's not just about the book. It's about the quality of the writing. And I think right. that as the supreme academic over here, Chi Chi said, <laughs> that's, that's 
to me, that's really going to hook you, you know, but. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the really horrible book that I'm reading right now. Um, that we'll probably we can talk about. Yeah, we don't. No, yeah, let's, no, not, we, let's just one, focus. We, we have, have a, one. we have one horrible exactly. book to talk about. So. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so Colleen Hoover is Verity. So a brief plot synopsis. How do we describe this book? A an aspiring writer, uh, you know, bears witness to a horrific accident. At uh, the site of the accident, another witness happens to, you know, provide her with some comfort. It turns out that the person uh, who helps her at the site of the accident, right, because she's like all bloodied and everything. This is like the first few pages, so I'm not giving anything away. Happens to be married to a big name author, right? And um, she's meeting with the publishing company. She's meeting with this guy. Um, and they've invited her to basically ghostwrite for uh, this man's um, dying author wife. Uh, we don't so, really know, right? What's wrong with her? This she's right. She's gone in an accident. They need. She's just not. We know that she's not capable of right of writing. Exactly. Right. So it's kind of like a mystery within a mystery. Exactly. And then things just start to unfold. Well, yeah, because she has to go and live with the family right yeah so that's the thing about like the book is it's set in the for the majority of the book it's set in this house that seems to be located in an isolated setting it's a really like large ma mansion that's the vibe that you get it's sort of gothic in that it's you know it's described as a very creepy looking over looming overbearing yeah. like house um, and I think this is like the baby for me in the um, in the entire narrative. The descriptions that, like you pointed out, you pointed out that there's not many of them. That's true, but you know there are these moments of clear, really yes. crystal descriptions. Yeah, the description of the floorboards creaking, the description of like the overbearing, the overlooming house, the hauntingness, and it, it's just it's got this vibe. That immerses the reader into the narrative. Yeah. yeah. She hooks you right away, kind of. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, like a the, first date or something. It's super compelling. And as so somebody who's read Gothic, I've read previous Gothic like works, um, Edgar Allan Poe, right? Mm -hmm. It's just really, really nice. Mm -hmm. I, I liked it. I liked it. It hooked me in too. Okay. So we're being fair. Yeah. We're being so fair, right? Yes. We're, we're talking about the yes. baby. We did get a sidetrack, though, with the plot of the book. Talking. No, about... it's good. She goes it's to like... live with this family, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. To, to ghostwrite for exactly. this author. Yeah. And like a creepy, scary movie, mm -hmm. things start to happen. Exactly. And we, you know, truce unravel. Exactly. Um, not truce unravel. Exactly. And yeah twists and turns at every corner again like i said before the actual plot storyline of the book yeah has some merit and some value and i did enjoy it that is the sole reading the sole reason i kept re uh listening to the book yeah is because i wanted to know what happened that's it but i think that yeah i'm i i i'm gonna leave it at that yeah Okay, because so, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep talking about this book because we have so I, I have so much to say, but I don't just want to you know put it all out there all at once. Okay, so you know the good parts. There are these moments of clear writing. There are these moments of like you know intriguing, compelling yep. descriptions and tensions. I yeah, think yeah, right? tensions are good between the like the narrative, the main character because it's um yeah the main character. And uh, the various, the one other, really one other um, villain of the entire narrative. But uh, okay, here's actually where we might we might flag you that if you haven't read this book and you don't want any spoilers, yeah, I would stop listening. Really? Okay. Yeah. You think? Are we going to spoil anything? I think we should. We're talking about the book. <laughs> That's the whole point of a book review. We can't just talk about the synopsis of the book. Okay, fine. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Only come I, back if yeah. you've actually listened to the <laughs> book. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I wasn't going to spoil. I was going to talk about the character. I was going to talk about the... Oh, my gosh. Oh, my... Do you know when authors try to write really strong female characters, but they really fail? Yeah. I don't know. Like... I, I think this 
I like I can't say that the author is not a good writer because that's not fair. I'm not a good writer. I yeah, can't write. I, I, I can't think write. That's relative. Right. It's relative exactly. to the genre. It's relative. Okay, to so the I'm not going to lambast the author's writing. It's just preference wise, right? Yes. The writing of the female characters, my goodness, they could have just all been the same character. Mm -hmm. So flat, one dimensional. I mean, actually, all the characters are one dimensional. But I think it was even more annoying between like the female characters because I felt that the author was trying to do something smart and witty with the characters, mm -hmm. with the way failed. that they processed, right? Like mm -hmm. the, with the, with the way that they communicated. Yeah. But I, like I said to you before, I truly felt like it could have been, can we even say the villain's name? Like, I, like you did have the like warning, like a bye yeah. if you don't want to be spoiled. So well, well and this kind of like also, yeah, yeah. Verity, Verity, right? I, yeah. That's also relative, I guess, depending on how you perceive, right? The ending, right? I mean, the whole book, we're thinking like, so I will also give props to the author in that regard because up until a certain point in the book, mm -hmm. you're thinking that Jeremy yeah. is potentially the villain. Like, oh, that's what I thought names. in my, my mind. I was hoping it would uh, be Jeremy. I know. See, that would have been like significantly far more compelling I know. than Verity yeah. just being like the one dimensional I know. evil. Um, and then it turns out it's not. Yeah. And no, he's, he's as good as he's presented yeah. from start to finish. He's a very handsome, very sexy, like gym working out buff, you know, <laughs> bro dude that happens to be very rich, right? Live in a mansion. Yeah, because of Verity. Because of but his wife. also get this also very compassionate. I mean, he would never hurt a hand. He would never. Uh, yeah, it was very idealistic. The the character it was, was. Oh my goodness! And I think it was like halfway through that I realized I'm reading a romance novel. It was like extreme <laughs> romance. Oh, that's like a whole other a whole other thing. Um, but we were talking about the flatness of the characters. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like the the difference between Lowen, yeah, the difference between Lowen and um, Verity were <laughs> like, I mean, really, because the author did a crap job to to describe the characters to really get uh, get us into their heads. In my opinion, like yeah. I didn't really know what this character either character was thinking. Yeah, I couldn't really picture what either of them re really looked like. What yeah, the, what you know their I guess their essence or their being was I couldn't get into their head they all just feel, felt the same um and there's only really three characters like, characters in the book so it's like yeah and it was all dialogue minus the first couple <laughs> chapters this is my one comment to Chi Chi when I was reading this well listening to this book was like there's no descriptions there's no nothing it's just literally conversation I was, I was listening to a conversation I might as well be listening to a bad <laughs> podcast because it was just like yeah I I so I don't mind. I don't mind dialogue. I, do, I don't even notice. As long as the characters are fleshed out, yeah, as awesome. long as the narrative is interesting, right? And from start to finish, I understand the motivations behind the characters' actions. Like, I'm not one of the readers that needs to like the character. I don't need to identify with a character. I just need to... No, no, I don't think I need to like the character. No, yeah, I just need to. I need to. I need to know that they're two different people. No, for sure, right? And, the and I agree. Do a good 100%. job in, in in expressing that this this is person A, this is person B. That's right. not the same person. Right, right, right. right. Even I'm more so they were the same. The way she know because it was just dialogue. It was, it was like just all like twinsies had, like <laughs> if we didn't know that jeremy was a boy i would think there'd be a third girl like but, you know like just the way that they spoke i don't know no i'm more commenting on like something i've noticed just some book talk and like like all over the internet with uh vloggers and youtubers that talk about books this like it's like people need to like a character to identify with a character it's like a new, th I feel like it's a new thing. Oh, yeah. I just, because I, I feel like, well, think about like the greatest books that you've ever read. Yeah. Have you really identified with the characters? No. Yeah. East of Eden, I didn't yeah. identify with any of the characters. No. I guess that's for me as a style. Or is that the writing? Right, exactly. 
Um, but it's something that I hear now more and more with people like, I didn't identify with the character. And that's a critique of this. So that's where that was coming from. Okay. Um, but like, that's just me saying, I, I don't need to identify. I don't like, I'm not that kind of reader. I don't care to identify with the character. However, I mean, I need to understand. I need to see some depth and nuance in the way that they process and the, in the actions that they take. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's this like, one moment in uh, the book where um, uh, Lowen's character, Lowen is the main, main character, Jeremy <laughs> offers to put a lock on, like, yeah. on her door from yeah. the outside, yes. locking her in because she uh, has a condition where she sleepwalks. And she said yes to it. Okay. Now, for so many reasons, I thought this was the most idiotic thing, right? Like, because... She has already established, Lowen has basically explained over and over that she's creeped out in this house. Uh, she feels like she's she's nervous to be there. She's really scared. Um, and I understand that the author was trying to go with like a vibe that Lowen is this very passive, this very like um, people pleaser. Like she'll say yes. But for, I don't know if you picked up on this, but for like half of the novel, I felt that she was also trying to like write Lowen as a strong female character that sort of asserts herself. Shit balls and wine has been spilt. <laughs> My wine. Well, I didn't want to say you were just getting so involved and passionate about. <laughs> I know. Okay. That means I get to have another glass. Of course you get to have another Great. glass. Okay. Basically, I was saying that I felt that the author um, was contrastingly trying to establish like this very strong sort of like knows herself female character and then on the other side there's this like r big people pleaser that will agree to something that's clearly dangerous mm -hmm. and a situation she doesn't want to be in yeah i think i, I on that there was just no really, justification behind that for no, me i think she was trying to develop that was her way of developing the character right like again just by dialogue to develop dialogue and action right, right? right to develop right. some kind of character because in the end you know with the the letter that she finds like Lowen does grow a pair of you know to stand up for herself right and because more you know she might have been like oh jeremy <laughs> here's this letter you know but she like you know she's like i'm this is she's asserting herself right right so i think it's i think it's her was the author's way of like just tell like giving us an example of like through dialogue and action, this is the character, right? That's a, yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. That's true. That's so true. Yeah. Like rather than like an internal yeah. like monologue. Because she does end up standing, standing up for herself too against Faraday, uh, uh, you know, with, um, I even forget, I blocked it out, but you know, she what, does. She whispers severity. Yeah. Right. She right. does yeah. face face up to it because she's sick and tired of it yeah um so she's not just you know people pleasing because if she was people pleasing she wouldn't have you know told jeremy to put verity in a home she wouldn't have not a home um, oh that's that's what you I'm know what i mean say. like like it was very conflicting yeah it was and it was like a lot of the decisions that she did make were motivated by jeremy entirely right and like oh, it was just so uh oh, blah and it was so I was just so she was a one dimensional character. Oh, if you haven't read it, just get ready to be grossed out because there's a lot of sex. I mean, some people might love that. We shouldn't really say that. OK, when okay. I didn't, we found that. And it's not that sex is gross. We're not saying that. Oh, it's come I, on. I, I'm just saying some people might not know. Like, come on. I mean, we I mean, we have kids. Obviously, we know that sex is not gross. Um, right. But it was more so the way I'm going back to it again, mm -hmm. the way that even the sex scenes were written were just like the whole book was written like very elementary and even the sex scenes were just yes yeah i it's hard to me to describe it because i'm just i've not been um this unenthused with descript book descriptions right. um not book descriptions sorry the uh, the way a book has been written i'm not i don't have the the word in my on my it's on the tip of my tongue like just well you're saying it yeah i mean yeah it's like the, the lack the, the way it was written the, or the lack of words it was 
juvenile, right? It was juvenile. And I don't wanna I don't wanna use that word, but oh, like it was. We're seeing it again. We're just focusing on the bathwater. I can't help it. Oh I can't I know. Help it. Okay. Like we have to be fair. Otherwise we're just like meanies and I don't wanna be like I mean, we're working. We re- we're working on another book, and it's not. It's it's much better. And we did read another one that is also much better. So we're not yeah. like shitting on every single book. I know that we're going to be reviewing. It just so it happens. Hold on, that hold this on. One. Here, here. I have a really important question to ask you right now. Okay, will you see the movie when? Because this is going to be made into. Oh, a- we know it's going to be made into a movie. I mean, this I'll like, watch it, but I'm like. not going to the movies to watch it. I'm not paying money out of my pocket oh, to watch this movie. Paying money. No. <laughs> I'm way. definitely gonna do it. No, <laughs> wait. The thing, I kind of wish I saw this as a movie instead of like. Oh, I'm just gonna make an excellent it would be movie. So good. That's what I mean. The I plot, like, the plot is good. You know, and when you the get plot really, good. really good, steamy hot actors, yes, you know, having all that good. sex, please same more with, sex on like, TV. Same with, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey. I that's read it. I read the book. That's exactly what I was trying to remember. I read the, the book. Post Twilight, like fanfic. Of Twilight I, era, I, I feel like Twilight that's exactly too. what it is. And Twilight was way better written. You say that because you were just a, you know, maybe more uh, immature is not. But I'm not. Yes, I was younger. Reader. I mean, I wasn't that young when I read Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay. Okay. You just no, but that you just said. I thought you meant like in age, but you meant as sophisticated as a reader. No, because expectations. Were no, because lower. I was reading Ken Follett like when I was younger. Ooh. And like, okay, in between like Fifty Shades and all of that. Well, there oh, you go. No, and I enjoy feel when that I think better. about like, and I talk. I like I sent you a voice note earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, oh, it's a genius because I want <laughs> to enjoy bad books. Like, I don't want to think that they're bad. I like you know the like trashy TV. Why is it that I can watch trashy TV and just like get on with my life and not be annoyed? Right? Because you but don't like, have to use your brain when you're reading. You're using your brain. I'm not you come you are. are. You come are. Like, you're com- I'm, I'm literally little little trashy books. <laughs> like how much of my brain power am I you using? Considered a trashy book. We're not. We're not like there are trashy <laughs> sections, like of the romance section. That's all just trash. I mean, I mean the best kind of trash. Oh, if you if you like that kind of book, fine. I have. We're not ju- okay. And like, let's just also say mm-hmm. we are not judging anybody mm-hmm. who likes this book or no, no, any other you. book. Reading to read like is the most important thing. If that's your sure. outlet and you like to read, it's important to read. Okay. We all have our things. I like historical fiction. No one, I'm not a lot of people. I mean, I shouldn't say that. Like. That's a unique genre. So is romance. So is, you know, sci-fi. I don't mm-hmm. think I could pick up a sci-fi book. I like watching oh, sci-fi. Oh, you are making me read historical fiction. I'm going to make you read sci-fi. It's fine. I've never read sci-fi. So it's not that I, I like watching sci-fi. Yeah. You know, I yeah, thought I was saying, like, everyone has their own thing. So we're not judging you yeah. for, you know, your specific genre. We are just two people saying that the trashy romance is not. I don't think we're going to be reviewing a trashy romance book on this podcast. I won't read it. I think, that's the one one I won't I read. It'll be better than me and know the genre of <laughs> books you're going to recommend for our mini book club before you recommend it. Because I clearly didn't know what I was getting <laughs> into, and I said we should read Verity. I was just looking for good thrillers, you know. I mean, it is a thriller, like. Like, like I said before, she did. I really did enjoy the storyline, and yeah. I said that multiple times. You I did. She did a great job. It just needs to be written better. See, let's talk about that ending. Right? Okay, that's stupid. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're focusing on okay. the baby. So after that ending, after all of this, right? The letter. Yes. So right at the end, like we've this entire book has established Verity as the evil, like yes. sociopathic. Yes. So maniac, much so right? much in, so much in the way that um Jeremy ends up killing her. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like and, and he actually he is a te- he like a te- Oh yes, te- because we forgot a major thing, then like one of the major kind of subplots yeah. to this entire book, which also were there subplots? Oh jeez, I felt like it was just one <laughs> all the <laughs> manuscript. Right, right. That Lowen Lowen finds this manuscript yeah. that Verity wrote wrote um, yeah, about her life yeah. and her inter and her life with Jeremy and their children. Right, and it is horrible. I don't mean like horribly written. I mean that too. But yeah. the storyline is just evil. It's pure 
evil, the, what she's writing in this manuscript. So we're flopping between this story that Colleen has written, right. which is lacking because it has, <laughs> it is lacking many things. Um, but we're also comparing it to other literature. Like, I don't think that's fair for Colleen. Not everyone can write like certain. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. So she finds this manuscript that outlines all of the wrongdoings that Verity's done in her life mm -hmm. and all of the evil deeds, like trying to kill her babies. Z babies. She, she did kill. Yes, she did actually yes, kill successfully, one. Right? Um, Apparently. This manuscript. Yes. Yeah. According to this manuscript. All right. So then Lowen finally decides that she's going to turn this manuscript over to Jeremy. Right. Because Jeremy's kicking her out of the house. She, he doesn't believe her that Lowen uh, Verity is alive. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Jeremy then kills her. But yeah. he's he knew he knew about the manuscript, yep. which is what we find out in this letter. Right. He knew about the manuscript, tried to kill her, but it ended up not working. Um, where was it going with this? This is what leads us up to this letter. Right. This is I just wanted to give some backstory in case right. anyone was still listening, right? <laughs> so Lowen finds this letter that Verity wrote. Yeah. And basically, the letter is like everything you read in that manuscript is not is true. Not true. Yeah. It was just part of a... After they've basically murdered Verity. Yes, they've murdered her. Now Lowen is pregnant with Jeremy's baby. They're starting a new life with right. the one remaining child right. um, from Verity and Jeremy. So yeah, like we find out that this letter just says that I can't believe you would you know, believe that manuscript. It was an, it was an, it was an exercise. My editor made me. That was the big reveal. That was like, the big, that's the big psychological thing. twist right. on the narrative. It's so annoying. I know. And I, the most annoying part wasn't for me, like was my reaction. Like, oh no, you killed her. It was like, what a load of garbage. Exactly. I like, so you and I both, Um, I don't know if we ever established what you thought of that letter, if it was BS or not, because to me, that letter, whether or not you believe it's true or whether you believe it is false, yeah. completely changes your perspective yeah. of who is the villain. Right. Because if you like if he absolutely. Yeah. So I guess that that would be the baby of the book, right? Yeah. Like, the, it, the book is trying to toy around with this notion of who is actually the villain. Yeah. The story. Maybe. Yeah. Or like the complexity of Verity in that. OK, is she. Is she actually the, the innocent victim here? It was just executed or, really poorly. Yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm smiling. Again. Yeah, I know. I can't see that through <laughs> the microphone. I know. <laughs> Couldn't have been executed any any worse. No. No. Um. Yeah. Like, I don't, I think that letter is a pile of garbage. I think that she, I don't mean like, I mean, yes, it's a pile of garbage, but I don't think that it's true i so, think that she was just saying that because she got caught in her lie and i right. think she's an actual awful human being i like i i think and this this will come up this will come up again in our conversation on none of this is true which is the second book that we're going to cover but i don't need there to be an either or right i don't need it to be that the manuscript is authentic and Verity is telling the truth or that, uh, that uh, you know, it, it was a lie, right? Like, I, I don't need I don't need an answer to the story. I just need to know what the author is doing. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah, you and I are opposite sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. So this is this is where <laughs> like I need to know where the book, what what the main purpose of the book in terms of, you know, like when you used to read, what's the moral of the story? So what is the moral of the story? Um, and I think that the central theme that the book was trying to get at is um, like this, it's trying to complicate this notion of, you know, what constitutes the villain. So in this case, if the, if the, um, the manuscript is actually true, then that means that Jeremy and Lowen did something that they didn't realize they were doing. They murdered somebody in cold blood without actually realizing the implications of it, thinking that that person yeah. did something really horrible, right? And also, I think that the book was trying to tease out this notion of, like, you know, truth, which is, I, I think, you know, like a common, you know, fixation of um, thriller genres like playing on what is true, what is false, what meets the eye. It, like it's yeah. like it's kind of a trope, right? We see it all the time in movies. Like it's like playing on that notion yes. of truth, yes. yeah, and what what meets yeah. the eye. So I like 
I like that. And but it was just done. I know. I was, like it was so. I don't like. Can I even say that it was dumb? <laughs> yeah. I. You know what? You must honestly think like. I'm like a, a really immature reader. You must be you, not no. you, not oh. you. But like, no. I. It's either that this is just a really bad book, or that. It assumes that the reader is a really book. bad reader. It's a right? lacking book. Yeah. Let's okay. call it a bad book. It's okay. a lacking book. Because he, he knew about the manuscript. Exactly. So this and he tried to kill her. Perfect man. Yeah. Knew about the manuscript. No, that's all I'm talking about. He did okay. try to kill her. Okay. But he pretended not to know about the manuscript. Mm. Because when Lowen handed it to him, he acted like, where'd you get this? Like mm-hmm. he was looking for it because he wanted to have it as some kind of evidence in case he needed to turn it to the police. Mm-hmm. So there was that element of um, deceit to his character. Deceit, yep. Which, yeah. again, I liked. Right. Um, I thought there should be more to it. Again, that's what this book, it's just lacking. Right. It was just dialogue and a oh, good plot. There was no character development. There was right. no descriptions. This book could have been better. I mean, how? I mean, I, I listened to the book. I'm going to go grab the book right now. How long is this book? It's like 300 pages. 300 pages. Yeah. Honestly, Colleen Hoover could have written it in what? Written in like, yeah. no. Short story. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I was actually going to say. Better short story. No, I was going to say she could have dedicated 150, 200 more pages. Right. And filled in the missing gaps. Okay. Right? Right. This could have been an interesting, great book. My right. phenomenal, phenomenal <laughs> one of words. It's going to make a great screenplay because you know what they do with screenplays? They rip apart the book and get to the plot. They don't actually take the dialogue. They take the dialogue. That's Maybe that's what she was going for. She wanted Maybe. it to be a movie. Okay. And she's just like set up for the dialogue. I, um, I, I Again, I think it's going to make a great movie right. because of the plot. Right. There, in terms of a literature piece. Right. Didn't do it for me. Well, I mean, should we like, you know, go to the next book? Yes, because it's so much better. It literally is like we and we read, have a lot to compare. We, we, there, yeah, the the plots are not the same, right? But the genre is the same, I think. Yeah, uh, no, this is a romance thriller. I don't know if that's a like an. I didn't even know there was such a thing as romance. Nope. But no, none of this is true. It's not a romance thriller. So I think we should stop this and then yeah. restart. But um, yeah, that's it from okay. us for Arena. Thanks, thanks for listening. And uh, let's cheer us one more time. We don't have a catchphrase, but we have a wine. <laughs>